Hi guys, Chuck here, KK6USY. Welcome to Ham Radio Adventures. A while back I built the, what's been called the Chucky Hex. That's kind of a joke. Uh, it's a hex beam, portable, and it, it does six through 20, just like any other hex beam. What I wasn't happy with it was this, okay? Let me show this to you. Now, this is the hub where everything goes. I don't like the size of it. It, I don't like, if you guys are relying, I, if you notice I've got metal inside this printed, this is a PETG, but it's printed, uh, 3D printed. Don't rely on stuff like that, guys. If you're, it's something that's gotta have to have some stuff on it. It's great for winders, stuff like that, but really not for this. But I'd like the size. It doesn't go in my bag very easy and I just don't need all the size, and I think I can lose some weight. What I've done is I bought a piece of, I think it's 3 16 plate aluminum, and the stuff that I used there was really thin. It was, it was for signs, but it worked pretty good. Now, now I have the same thing at about six inches smaller, if you guys can see the difference. I mean, quite a bit of difference, right? So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna cut this I'm gonna use the same process. I'm gonna use these pipes like this, like I have on this one here. I'm gonna use those still. I have a little twist for it. I'm not gonna talk about it yet because I don't know if it's gonna work. If it works, you guys will definitely find out about it. So let's cut this thing and hopefully it won't get hurt. Oh, by the way, what do I do with them? Nothing more important than your safety glasses. Always wear safety glasses, especially when cutting metal. I'm gonna cut this with my skill saw. It's uh, it's softer than the carbide blades, so it should be fine. We'll see. It may or may not be. I should cut it with no problem. Gonna be a little noisy. All right, I've tried to get this somewhere in the shade for you guys, but uh, I did leave the end of it on, so I had a little more to play with here. All right, let's see how this works. Gonna be noisy. I just about guarantee it. One down. All right, two down. This stuff cuts like butter, guys. And believe me, no saw blades were hurt in this uh, operation. And if I didn't mention it, you guys, you need to set your saw blade too and never take the guard and pin it back because I've never done that. Okay, maybe a couple times when I had to. Sometimes it is necessary. All right, that was pretty easy, guys. I've done it with a grinder before. My cuts never are that straight. All right, let me show you. Let me get my template, and I'll show you how I came up with this. On on, uh, and I use Tinkercad for that. Hang on. All right. Oh, yeah, I guess I don't need these anymore. So, eye protection, guys, don't forget it. So what I did, now, I was talking about the 3D printer. 3D printer is a great thing, don't get me wrong, for certain things, like I made this nice little template. And what's nice about this is I probably couldn't have, I could have drawn it, but now I have something that's really easy. And if I did it over again, I take this center hole here, I'd have made the same size as these, because these holes, are perfect for taking a marker and going through and marking your holes. What I have now is this versus this. Quite a bit, quite a bit difference in size, isn't it? I think this is going to work really good. But I'm also going to screw through the pipes like I did here. You see this? There's screw here and screw here. But my problem is, and I think I've fixed that problem is I don't want these things sticking out as far as this. I don't want to get any bigger than it is. 
It is gonna get a little bigger if it works though. So I'll show that to you later in the video. Make sure you stay to the end because sometimes I get questions about things that were in the video, guys, especially in these build videos. You need to watch the whole thing if you're really interested in it. If you're not, just breeze through it. All right, let's get on to the next part. So these are like what they call the uh, centering bits, I think is what they're called. They just, they just made, I'm just getting a good spot for my next drill bit, which will be the size I need. So this is the size it needs to be. Now the middle hole is gonna be a half inch, but there's a certain reason for that. And later on in the uh, video, I will tell you why that is. All right, here we go. Let's drill some holes. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the middle one anyhow, but uh, it's gonna be a half inch. So this will be the size for these though. Real happy with the way the uh, template came out. Better, to me, a little bit better than paper. Now, you don't need a drill press for this, but it's nice if you have one. This isn't real, th I mean, it's not super thick, but it's thick, so it is kind of nice to get it nice and straight. All the holes are drilled. You just have to do a half inch in this center one, and like I said before, I'll let you guys know how why that is. All right, so here is the new plate. All installed. It's working really well. It's way smaller, way lighter. I can give you some uh, comparisons later. And then they just this is the uh, the center post where you feed the wires to. And there's one of the wires there. I'm trying to get it in that tree so it's a little darker. Okay, now I am going to change these. I printed these at the time, that's what I had. I don't like them, they're not, they're not strong enough. But I'll show you what I'm going to change it to. All right, so what I'm going to change to is these little clips here. Uh, I don't have to make them for one. Hopefully that's in focus. It's kind of hard with all the background stuff. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the tops. I think I'm going to use these to do the top also. And the top is these lines that hold it in this position. I don't know if you guys can see it. Hard, hard to get videos, guys. People complain if you don't show the antenna. But sometimes it's just really, really hard. And hopefully you can see the outline of everything there. I only have one band on it right now. I did luck out that... Um, the bends are still about, about right, about the same as they were. You can see how it bounces a little bit. Here, let me bounce it for you guys. And it really never does that, but uh, kind of dances in the wind sometimes, but not that bad. Usually the wind doesn't affect it that bad. It was windy here yesterday. And for now, until I figure something else out, I'm just, this is basically, if you Google how to build a hex beam, this is how they tell you to do this. There's different ways to do it, and I may do something different. And for now, this is what I have. This this pole, this mast, has a half inch screw top. It has a hole in the top with the half inch threads, and that's what's holding this on and everything else. I do have another piece that goes underneath. I didn't put it on right now. But this mast also, when you lift it up, can't, I probably can't get it high enough, but it has, it has points where you can put a pin through it too, so you can pin it up also. They don't drill it to where you can pin it from moving though, and I'll have to do that myself. But so far it looks like it's gonna work really well. I do need to adjust the bands, I already knew that. I'm a little bit long. Really good in the FT8 on 20. And 20 is the, the one I have on right here, so that's the one at the top here. 
and so I'm, I'm probably going to shorten it and get it a little bit farther up the bench. Resin it like really low, like 14, below 14, where X is zero, which SWR is actually pretty low there also. All right, hope this helps you guys. All right, for a size comparison, here's the old one. Hopefully you guys can see the difference in size. This thing weighs almost 500 grams. This one's less than 200, around 200 or so. Probably 200 with everything on it. See the difference? This metal is thinner and not quite as strong. But when you put the tubes on, and the tubes were way longer, they were right way out to here on this one to get to the end. And uh, it strengthens it up quite a bit. This one's solid. You guys can see how thick that is. I want to say 3 16 it's about a third of the weight so far. And if I do change this to something like aluminum, I can probably get a little less weight there also. All right, so for now, this is where I'm at. I'm doing this in stages when I have time between other things to, you know, family things and all that other stuff. So for now, this is where I'm at. Uh, it's totally usable where it is right here. No problems at all using it if I want to use it in the, in the near future. I do want to change the the post that goes up that where you mount all the wires to the feed the feed point. I want to do that with some kind of aluminum. There's a couple ways to do this. One of the ways is to run two bars apart from each other so they don't touch. You run this the center to one side and the shield to the other. That might be an option. That's a pretty easy way to do it. It's not the, the it's not the really the most normal way that people do it. A lot of times what you have is a, an actual tube, like an inch and a half or something like that of aluminum, and then another shaft inside, and one goes to, I think the outside usually goes to the shield and the inside goes to the center core. So uh, I just gotta find a good way of mounting that. I haven't quite figured a way. I, I know how to do it. I just haven't figured out how I wanna do it. So, and, and to make it strong. It still has to be strong enough to hold all that stuff. But if you think about it, all the things are pulling apart from each other so there is a lot there isn't a lot of pressure on that center post in most circumstances like that if you have high winds and stuff like that sure uh, but this is not made to leave up you know 24 7 for a couple of years you know if i have a long camping trip i'm going to be out for three or four days and i want to set something up that has some gain this is what i want to use so yeah it's 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 a pretty good setup it probably takes me 20 to 30 minutes when I do it, but I don't do it all the time. You know, if I did it all the time, I probably don't have it by 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, I, I do have a few things that can speed things up. I, the way I do the wire is faster than what I've seen other people do, but uh, you know, it's just, uh, I don't know. It, it's just something I don't want to set up all the time. Only if I'm going to be there for a few days. Like when I go to Quartz Fest, it's kind of nice to have it. So if you do want to see more content like this and you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, please. And then hit the bell, hit all. That way you'll get all my future videos. And I'm going to do more videos on this and a couple other antennas I got going. So I'm Chuck, KK6USY. Thank you for joining me on Ham Radio Adventures today. I know your time is valuable. 73 all, and hope to catch you on the airways.